Lemores and CB's tie. Sorry. Tie. What are you kidding? How fast do you want me to catch the beating uh, when I go back home? Brooklyn, I have to say. But I was born in Queens. Is that right? Raised in Brooklyn, born in Queens. They had to drive me over to Queens to have the kid. Because my old man was in the military, so, you know, we got the discount. <laughs> we went to the military hospital to have it. I'd have to say Jimi Hendrix because of, first of all, because of the walls he broke down. See, I dig the innovators, the guys that took things to the next level, whether they meant to or not, they ended up doing it. And, um, you know, people like Jimmy just kind of changed the world, you know, in a very short time, and then he was gone. And he changed the way people play the instruments. So I, and I'm still blown away by him every time I hear what he does, you know, what he used to do. So, um, and then go back to, uh, you know, any of the old blues guys I used to listen to, Back in the day, Robert Johnson, Marty Waters, when I was first trying to learn my chords and all that, you know, and then, of course, what really gets you going when you're younger was Eddie Van Halen, Randy Rhodes, you know, Tony Iommi and uh, the, all that shit. But, uh, you know, not saying shit, I'm saying all the, all the great arena rock guitar players, you know what I mean? Minus. <laughs> Slayer, Rain and Blood. Fuck yeah. Insanity. 2,000 fucking people in there. Just unbearable. Crazy. But you wouldn't miss a minute of it. Fucking nuts. I miss Stevie Ray Vaughan. I missed Randy Rhodes in New York. And uh, I, missed, uh, I missed some legendary shows that where, you know, shit happened, but... Um, other than that, musically, um, I don't know, man. Uh, you know, probably the Ramones at CB's. You know, I saw them at Lamar's, you know, shit like that. Like, I, I don't know, there's just so many legendary things that uh, I missed out on, you know. I feel like we came up a little late for a few things, so. But um, shit, now, now it's always like we feel like we miss shit because we're never around, you know, we're always touring, so we're always missing the good shit. Is hardcore dead? No way. No fucking way, bro. There's young bands out there that are just really, you know, angry. And anger is good. Anger is what, you know, this is about anyway. It's a, in a lot of ways, it's a, a positive outlet for anger. We've always talked about that. But I see it, it's still evolving, you know? And now here we are, we're like, you know, classic rock hardcore. You know what I'm saying? Like, compared to the new shit, like, the, we're the golden oldies already. Like, a lot of our old stuff that we were known for in the past. But we're still a, a viable, you know, force or whatever in our own way because we're not dead, we're not gone, and we're about to do a brand new record that's going to be part of the new whatever the fuck this music is, man. You know what I mean? But there's a lot of fucking bands, there's a lot of fucking people showing up at shows, and it's amazing to me that... Everywhere we go, all over the world, it's not just hardcores around, but it's a New York thing that's all over the world. Everybody's very New York, very influenced by the New York area. And it's pretty amazing to see in different countries, man. You know what I mean? And uh, I don't think that's going anywhere. Believe in yourself. Listen to yourself. Do what you want. Do it with conviction and it'll speak for itself and it'll earn its respect. Try to get out of music what you deserve, not what you can get away with. There's no tricks, there's no software, there's no, you know, you gotta be a band and you gotta do it right. You gotta do it live and do your own thing because there's only one you. So if it's, you're being true to yourself, it's gonna be original because you're doing it from here. You're not doing it from here or here. You know what I mean? So that's it. Just don't be afraid, you know? Don't, don't say we have to write like this because these guys are all doing it and that's what everybody's dancing to now. No. You know, you got to do your own thing. I remember that Pete Steele, again, I want to bring up, when he made the transition to uh, Typo Negative, 
if you came out and played from going from carnival to type of negative, you came out with this real slow stuff. And at the time, everything was all, you know, like just fucking, just real aggression. P comes out, total opposite, right? And just comes out with this really slow stuff. And I remember somebody said to Pete, you know, you know, what are you gonna do when, you know, his first show and everything? What are you gonna do if nobody dances? He goes, I don't care. So let him do something else. And I was like, we were all, we, you know, we all took that as like, see, that's the attitude. You know what I mean? Let him do something else. Don't be afraid of, of anything. You know what I mean? So, for what that's worth, you know. Keep it alive, keep it real, and uh, you know, that's it, man. Don't sell out in, in here, you know. Lenny and John's, Flap Shaving. That's it. I just talked to him the other day, too. <laughs> yeah. All right. He called me because he saw a pigeon. He's like, yo, Bobby, I just saw a pigeon. I thought he I had to give you a call. Uh, I don't know. You see, <clears throat> Vinny's, Vinny's one of those guys, I got to say, um, for the record, you know, I always felt like he was true to me and a, a real good friend, you know, and I had some hard times. <clears throat> I went downhill pretty fucking fast, like with a tow truck with fucking nitrous on it. And... Uh, you know, he's one of them guys that didn't turn his back, and he always said, like, he, he believed in me, and he, he, you know, he was always, like, encouraging, you know what I mean? And in that way, and plus he was a guy that, you know, I always looked up to, you know, all, we all did. And he always treated us as a good friend, but uh, Vinny, Vinny, uh, Vinny definitely gave me some advice on not giving up. Put it that way.